In this video, we're going to take a look at how to assign a Cisco Identity Services Engine device. In this video, we are using a standalone device, so that means the admin node, the policy service node, um, and the monitoring node are all on one box. So, with access to ICE, um, we and by the way we're using uh, version 2.6 here uh, we need to head over to certificates system certificates and you can just check what certificates you actually have assigned for um, you know which services are being used so you can see here um, the certificate that's being used here is a um, self-signed certificate so what we're going to do is we're going to get this signed by the CA now. And you can also validate that as well by looking at your certificate. So we can see that it's been issued to uh, our ICE node. And we can see that it's also been issued by so self-signed certificate. So let's um, change that now. So what we need to do is we need to go to Certificate Signing Request or CSR. And we need to generate CSR and on here we can either select um, multi-use so the certificate can be used for multiple um, services on ICE so you can specify that it's only to be used for admin or e authentic authentication etc etc for this we're going to use multi-use we're not going to use a wildcard certificate and what we're going to do is we're going to generate CSR for the node that we're on here so in this case my node is called CCIE SEC 26001 we'll leave the CN or the common name as the FQDN organizational unit we could just call it network well, whiskey in this case um, you can call it obviously what whatever you choose to call it uh, depending on your environment um, Just populate all these fields here. And then country is UK. Subject alternative name, we'll just use DNS, um, and this will be the uh, DNS name of the device. Um, Currently, this is set to CCIE SEC 26001, but this is due to change. So, what I'm just going to call this is um, we'll call this ice lab dot network com. You can change the key types and the key lengths um, and the SHA. We'll just leave them as the defaults for now and we'll generate that CSR. You can see there, so it's not going to let us do um, because of the FQDN that's currently in use, it's not going to let us use this um, DNS name. So, what we can do is we can also specify another DNS name and we can actually have this as the FQDN 26001 and I think the domain that was in use there is yeah, networkwiskid.com okay so this should let us generate the CSR now and now you can see that the CSR has been generated. So what we need to do now is we need to export this and get this um, signed by the CA. So your CA might be different uh, to what I'm using, but in this demonstration, what we're going to use is the um, Microsoft Active Directory Certificate Services. <clears throat> so with that CA um, downloaded, let's just open this up. Let's go to... Uh, downloads and it'll be this one here and 
and we can see that this is the request so we'll just copy that let's turn it off for now and if we go to request certificate advanced certificate request and we just paste in that request and then what we can do is we can change this to web server submit that and what we'll do now is we'll select base64 encoded and we'll download the certificate so we've got that cert now downloaded um, what we'll also do is now we go back to ICE under certificate signing request and we can see the CSI that we created what we need to do now is select that and bind certificate choose our file and it's this one here and we'll call this um, we'll call this I cert and we're going to use this for <coughs> admin and you got to select OK for each one of these. We'll use it for ETLS. Um, and let's just select. In fact, we're not going to use portal, although we could have the default certificate portal. And we'll, we'll leave the rest. Submit that. So what it's telling us now is that the uh, enabling the admin role and certificate will cause the application server to restart on the selected node make sure the certificate chain is imported under the trusted certificates so two things here when you um, select yes the services are going to stop and restart so if you are using a standalone node uh, and you are running this in a live environment then um, you know you won't be able to authenticate new sessions in that period uh, while it's restarting the services and that's just so that it can um, pretty much assign the new certificate and we'll see the new certificate up here um, the other thing to note is that the certificate chain uh, must be imported under the trusted certificates um, so when we do that that's just essentially saying make sure that in uh, this case the CA uh, this, that's just signed uh, this ICE node uh, that CA certificate is also added under trusted certificates which it already is in this case so we don't need to worry about that so we'll just go ahead and press yes the um, yep so what this is saying is that because we've already got the default uh, assigned uh, we're just going to remove them and assign a new one and now you can see that the system is going to go down and restart so what we'll do is we'll come back once the system has restarted and we should be able to see the new uh, certificate in in here so as you can see at the moment we've got the the same old one so once the i services have restarted as you can see now on the screen we're presented with a um, warning to say that our connection is not private and this is just simply because our browser uh, doesn't trust the CA um, because I've not added that in yet but if we just advance proceed and we look at the certificate now we can see now that we're still using the the same uh, FQDN uh, but we can see now that the certificate has been issued by our CA and then you also see the certificate path you can see that's our CA certificate which is also being added to the trusted certificates within ICE and that's simply how you can sign ICE nodes with uh, CA certificates thank you for watching